All right, what is up, YouTube? So we're doing another update on floor pan removal in the Mustang. So this floor pan is now mocked up. It's in held in by self, self tappers. I will be pulling it back out. I just put a few in to see how the fit is. Um, I'm gonna need to massage this end in. You'll see there's a gap right here. Um, part of that gap will get filled up. So back here is your torque box. I'm gonna trim some more of that uh, metal away, not too much. It looks like someone patched it here a while back. It looks like there's a patch here, but probably gonna take another half inch. I also want to coat inside of there with pour 15. Um, so this is pretty much the mock-up of the floor pan. Um, if you look there, I got the measurements for the, uh, seatbelt connector. It goes right here in the center. I got to retake that out and spot weld that fast before, uh, you know, I also put this in. So this is it pretty much tacked up. I had to trim this down a little bit right here just to, uh, make that fit a little bit more snug and I had to take that seat pan off here as you can see the <clears throat> where the seats mount that's still in on that side so I'm going to go over kind of what you need I wanted to give a outlook on kind of what it looks like in the car um, I'm going to be welding a patch here for the torque box but I want to coat it first I'll show you the coating stuff I'm using um, obviously welder in a tank um, This uh, right there, that is for your seatbelt connector. So there's two spot welds in there. I showed it in another video. Those two. Um, when you're removing where your seats bolt to, there's spot welds. As you can see, you drill the spot welds out. And then I just cut... That way, when I go to put the new one back in, I have a point of reference where the old one went. Same thing there. So that's essentially how you get that out. So the things you'll need, shop back, that's optional. Water and bottle. Um, now, air hammer, your best friend. Uh, and your assortment of chisels. Hammer, this is the one I used to uh, separate where the seat, I don't even know what you want to call that, basically where your seats bolt to, seat bolt bracket, I don't know. Wide out marker, tape measure obviously, but yeah, you want your air hammer, uh, grinders in the car with an assortment of grinding disc and cutoff wheels, your wire wheel, set of mechanics gloves. This is a reciprocating aerosol. This comes in handy when you're trying to cut. Because when you go to do the floor pans on a 73 Mustang, there is, like, you can see how high up the seat pan sits. It goes right along where the rear seats kind of bolt into. So you do kind of need to make a circular cut. Um, these, recommend these. This is by a, a Handook, I guess. I don't know. I got them on Amazon. They got pretty good reviews. These are spot weld cutters. So you set a pilot hole with a center punch or a small drill bit, and then this will actually cut your spot weld out. And that way when you use the air, air hammer with the chisel, it goes a lot better. But this comes with a couple more pilot holes and a few more cutting bits. Drill, self-tapping screws, and a lot of patience. So that is essentially what you'll need to do that. Obviously, blades for your saw. Um, trying to think, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Also, when you're doing your floor pans, you will need to order your uh, 
drain plugs or covers. These go on the floor pans where the hole is. I guess if you ever get water in it or whatever, you take these out and you, it drains the water out. Now, what I'm going to coat the frame in is pour 15. And then you can also get a pour 15 top coat too. So I'm going to coat the floor pans. Uh, inside the torque box, the whole underside of the car, eventually, all that. Uh, you also want seam sealer to seal all your seams when it goes in. But, um, and then like I said, we're going to weld patches in where the torque box is. Your torque box sits back here. But that reciprocating saw comes in super nice when you're making that circle cut. So, also a few other odds and ends. Hammer, like I said, grinder, square, um, black marker, or like a whiteout marker, and a bunch of patients. So, that's pretty much the update video on what we're doing. Like I said, I got the seat bracket out. Um, the next thing we'll do is pull this back out, and then we'll drill holes every two inches for your welds. The first thing I'll do is... Well, to patch here first, and then see if that addresses the uh, little bit of a gap we have here. If not, I'll try to massage it to fit a little tighter, weld that patch in, and then we'll actually weld the uh, floor pan itself in. And like I said, my seatbelt bracket, got to go right here. So we'll drill two, uh, uh, two or four for spot weld that in there, and then drill your quarter inch hole for your your seatbelt mounts same thing will have to be repeated and like i said your drain cover caps go right here on both floor pans and your front floor pans have some so i got lucky like i said in hindsight i should have ordered a full floor pan but this is where your seat bracket where your seat mounts to was at and it's not there's no rust in it so i got pretty lucky um but in hindsight, I should have just got a uh, full floor pan. So, like I said, shop vac, drill, welder. I actually don't have a welder yet. I got the bottle, welding helmet. Uh, I'll be getting that in a week. Um, and lots of cutting wheels, as you can see. I got lots of cutting wheels, smaller ones for the air die grinder extra saw blades, grinding wheels, um, and I'm telling you, I'm a novice doing this, but this made my life so much easier. The spot weld cutting kit and the air hammer chisel. Now, I got this at Harbor Freight. This is the le least expensive in the Chief lineup. They have one that's like $138. The reviews were about the same. I've used Harbor Freight products before. Never had a problem. This impact gun is probably two years old. As you can see, it's gotten some pretty good use out of it. I've never had an issue with it. Um, every time I use it, though, I do put air oil in it. Every single time. And I've never had an issue with it. Same thing, I have the McGraw air compressor from Harbor Freight. It's been good. You'll read a lot of reviews. This is not supposed to run continuously, like all the time. So when I am using the air hammer, I do tend to give this a break because if it's running constantly, it'll take a little while, but it'll run and run and then I'll give it a break. It's the same thing with this. So like if you're using bigger, the bigger air tools like these, uh, intermediate use, never had an issue with it. I read a lot of reviews of people blowing those up, but you know, I think a lot of it is just because they're just letting it run and run and run constantly. So, yeah. Uh, underneath my cabinet there in the box, that's the headliner. So we will be doing a headliner for this. Um, I got a 20 cubic feet bottle. That's a Hobart one. Uh, again, I'd probably go with a 40 or a bigger one because... You'll burn through that pretty fast. And a few other things. I got heater cables. The 415. This is an interior screw kit. 
So it'll literally tell you where every screw goes. As you can see, still panels, quarter panel area, quarter panel, upper windshield trim, side window. So this will help you when you're putting your interior back together. Um, my back trim pieces broke where the package tray goes, where the speakers are at back there. So I ordered these used. I'm going to, you know, redo these, paint these black to match the car, the drain plug covers, and I got some headliner adhesive. And then the last thing is I'm waiting for my QA1 adjustable shocks to come, but I got the spanner wrench for it. And this is headliner insulation for the headliner. So when I'm done with these floors, the next thing I'll do is the headliner, and then we'll do some videos on suspension. I'll kind of show you how I go about separating the front floor pan from the frame rails. I'll kind of go over how I weld it, how I set my welder, if you have a titanium welder. That's the one I'm going with. I'll kind of tell you what heat settings I failed at because I'm going to test weld on some 55-gallon drum material. It's pretty th about as thin as this floor pan material, so I figured it'd be a good, good thing to practice on. And uh, I'll kind of let you know what my wire speed in is, is and how much heat I used and, you know, how I did it. So... This is the update. That's pretty much done. I have to still trim a little bit of metal, pull that back out, drill my hell holes for my spot welds, and then clean all that up, grind it, and then prep the floor pan for welding. So I'll get my welder the 28th. I'll probably cut this floor pan out the 27th, and then I'll have the welder the 28th, and we'll start welding some stuff in. So until next time, YouTube, I hope this helps. I'll kind of Go over the mistakes I made and what I've kind of figured out helped and didn't help and kind of the tools I need. Uh, again, spot weld cutters, really good. Air hammer, really good. I would suggest that for anyone. So until next time, YouTube, thank you.